Uh, as I mentioned, I've come up from Kelowna for this, and uh, we actually are the, uh, I'm the owner of the company that we manufacture this device and we sell it all over North America. And we're actually sh a ship run into Puerto Rico last week. We've been supplying the US military to fit out their air base housing over in Japan with the gas stove model as well. And we've been, um, uh, we're hoping to be in, uh, completed and in Best Buy uh, across North America by the end of uh, 2020. We'll be in Canada here by the end of this year. So it's, it's really taking off. And like I mentioned, it's kind of the, the new fad because there's so many distracted lifestyles these days. Um, moms with kids, you know, the kids are in the, in the bedroom scrapping, you know, she's trying to cook lunch and she's got to run and go and put out the fight and she doesn't want to have to come back and then put out a fire type of thing. So um, it's becoming very popular. And one of the reasons that it was initially developed was when my parents were still alive and my mother was dying of cancer, she a lot of times spent it in the bedroom and dad, who'd never spent any time in front of the stove, had never conditioned himself to pay attention to the stove after you turn it on. When she'd scream for something, boom, he's gone. He wouldn't worry about the stove, he'd be in the bedroom and there was always burnt food and everything. And so there's so many different situations from home offices. Um, I actually am fortunate enough to run my office out of my home. Our manufacturing and engineering facilities are all in Calgary. And so, you know, quite often, yeah, the telephone rings and I walk away, but I've got one on my gas stove and I know that five minutes later it just shuts the stove off and I deal with it when I come back and it's just all good. And the quality of my cooking has just gone up dramatically because I haven't burnt anything in two years now. So I do I get under in. this? Come on in, so. Mm -hmm. so that's sort of the, 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 uh, the reason that the device exists and such and it's, um, we've got one for electric stoves as well. And so uh, Derek had contacted us and said that uh, he'd like to uh, increase the level of safety in this building. And so we're getting a lot of that across uh, North America. Um, we do at Penn State University. Uh, they've been dealing with uh, you know, the kids down there getting you know, used to the marijuana down there and they uh, uh, turn their stoves on to put some craft dinner on or whatever and then they run away and they forget that they had the stove on or they're busy texting. So they've had some fires down there uh, St. Joseph's Hospital in New York, Staten Island. Um, they scatter them throughout New York for added safety within their buildings. Um, there's, uh, oh, I, just, I just go on and on naming places and facilities. Uh, we just recently actually supplied uh, 50 units down into Phoenix into the, their nation's uh, first autism housing development. So their autistic children can now move out and find a place of their own in this new fabulous building. It's all brand new like this structure and it's, uh, it's it's just a phenomenal facility and so they've got our product for that same reason and just absolutely love it and so basically it's just designed to detect when you're in the kitchen and paying attention to it and it just allows the cooking to continue and the moment you get having to get distracted by you know somebody's at the door or the telephone or whatever um, it has that five minute countdown in it and if you don't make it back within those five minutes it just shuts the stove off and prevents the food from burning and when you come back on it you just continue your cooking so, so it's very handy that way um, there's two um, modes to the product uh, one of them is the automatic safety shut off and so when you're going to do your cooking you basically just press the start button and it just you hear the little click under the stove, the gas valve is open, you just light your stove as you normally would. And then this countdown timer, um, if you were to stand still for, it's a five minute countdown, so if you stand still for a minute, it'll have counted down to four minutes remaining. As soon as it sees you move, it just bumps up to five again. So you can conceivably, if you walk away for four minutes and come back in the kitchen and sees you, I mean, it'll just continue to cook and cook and cook, as long as it knows that you're in the area and you're being relatively attentive to the cooking. It's just when you're gone for the full five minutes that it just shuts the stove off, preventing the burning food and such. So that's the automatic safety shut off and that's a, a great thing to be used to using. There is also a manual override. Now this is the cautious part of it because it just disables all the safety and it allows the stove to just operate unattended for great periods of time and it will also allow it to cook uninterrupted. So if you're doing a turkey, for instance, that's a nice time to 
not have to worry to keep coming back and forth. And typically it's used for the oven because ovens are somewhat, uh, not airtight, but they're almost airtight. Uh, anything that's uh, um, been well overcooked typically won't start on fire because the oxygen's been consumed in there. Um, it will burn and definitely smoke when you go to open the oven door, but you're not gonna start a fire with it. So, um, so there's those two modes. So you just use the manual timer sparingly uh, it's just nice to, I, well, I've got one in my house, like I mentioned, I just push the start button, I just go about my cooking, and, and I've been caught several times. Um, I'm single and sometimes might have a gal over for an, a nice evening, we're having a glass of wine in the living room and talking, and there is a reminder beep to remind you that the five minutes is just about up and then it's going to shut off, and I'm out here having a glass of wine and all of a sudden you hear the beep and I kind of chuckle to myself. And, so I'll get up and I'll just wander over to the kitchen and just make sure that it's continuing to cook our supper and whatnot. So, uh, but I tell you, it has saved um, so many uh, places. We, this device does connect to the internet and we do record every time the stoves are being forgotten. And every time it has to shut off automatically, we consider that a potential fire that's being prevented. And our system records all of those around North America. We've prevented almost 150,000 fires from happening in homes. And so it's really well received product. Um, I had a lady contact us the other day and uh, through her care worker um, who's looking after her daughter, she said, you know, I just wanted to tell you that it literally it saved her life and or also the rest of the people in the building because uh, she has uh, seizures and of course they just come on whenever and so uh, she was bake she likes to bake cookies and such for the local fire department and police departments as a, a show of thanks for all they do. And she actually had opened the oven door and was reaching in and had a seizure and fell onto the oven door and was partially on the door and partially off. And anyways, our device had shut the stove off and, and a whole appliance, preventing any further injury from her. And so um, then there's also a situation where we do have the ability to monitor for lack of motion, similar to those uh, Philips Lifeline pendants that they wear. And so when she didn't show up into the kitchen or didn't see any activity for a three hour period, it sent out a text message to alert uh, somebody in the area that they should come and check. And so then they found her and just everything was kind of taken from there. So it was very helpful to have her. My question is, uh, if it shuts off the gas, what about the gas fireplace? Oh, it just, we actually have a gentleman that bought one for his gas fireplace, but all this does is it just controls it's a stove. the stove. Okay. Yeah. Actually, the gentleman that's using it for his, uh, for his fireplace, um, he's the uh, fire commissioner in, uh, I'll just say Oklahoma without telling you which city, but um, they actually bought one for their, fire, their new fire station which actually was built to replace the old fire station that burnt down because they had forgotten to turn off their stove while they went out to put out a house fire, coincidentally, that was also created by somebody leaving their stove on. And so they came back and then had to put out their fire department. And anyways, it was quite a story, but so now they are thorough, thoroughly impressed with the product and they use it uh, at every opportunity that they can. And so some people have asked us if they wanted to modify that for their gas barbecues and such. But uh, it basically just controls a gas valve for yeah. whatever device you've got. So, so that's basically about it with the device um, as far as the, the simplicity of it, the basic features. And every one of the suites has one of these sheets and it basically just, just explains a little bit about the different buttons on the product and what the screen will actually say. And it just shows you how to start cooking, just press the start button and then light your stove. Uh, after you come back after five minutes and it actually has shut off, just push that very same button and just relight the stove again and away it goes. Then there's the manual timer um, instructions here which are really simple. When you first push it, it just pops up at 30 minutes. So there's a free 30 minutes for you. Or you can just use the up and down arrows to adjust it to whatever time you want for a turkey or a roast. Can you make it past two hours? Um, in case you're cooking a turkey. Yeah. Yeah, there's a way that you can do that. Yeah, we've. I think the device made the default. I think, I think it's four hours, and but it's adjustable. Anyway. 
parents. And you can ask uh, uh, Janae, and uh, we can, it's very simple to do. So. Is there a way to make it cook the meal? <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Please hurry. And I'm trying to design that so I can get my coffee maker to somehow get my coffee to me while I'm still laying in bed in the morning. But <laughs> we're working on that. So we've got a great little design department that prototypes products, and we've been asked to do a bunch of different types of things. And uh, anyways, this is the one that we're most proud of because it's uh, um, a lot of the uh, um, different uh, like Best Buy, for instance, they've got a, an assured living program for, for uh, <coughs> uh, to keep your loved ones safe at home. And then they've got a lo lower, uh, they've got senior tech, they've got smart homes, they've got all these products. But everybody you seem to talk to about, um, um, for occupational therapists and such, where families are trying to keep their loved ones in their residence because it just makes so much more sense. Um, they don't want to have to put them in a care facility. Uh, Every time they hear about this, it's like, oh, why am I just hearing about this product for the first time? And it's, uh, it's an exceptional product. And so one of our families, um, he actually called us about a year later and said that they'd calculated that they'd saved about $70,000 from not having to move their loved one into the care facility mm -hmm. and by able to keep her at home. And he said it just made everybody's life so much easier. And people can forget how to operate a dishwasher or their washer and dryer, but uh, in those situations for home care, when they lose the ability to interact with a stove, I mean, it's typically to a facility of some sort, you know, and so um, it just opens up the world to so many different opportunities, and, but it's typically just safety for busy lifestyles and, and, um, and the protection of everybody else in the buildings and such, and it's, uh, it's becoming really popular, so. So, do you have any other interesting questions for me that I could uh, answer for you? You said you have one for electric stoves. Yes. Is it operating the same way that this one does? It's actually even a little easier to use. Uh, it's There's no on button to press. Uh, the way it works is that when you just turn your stove knob on, it detects a flow of power going through our power box, and it just the device just wakes up and starts doing its business. And so then when it shuts off because you've been gone for five minutes, if you come back 15 minutes later, it sees you've come back and it beeps a couple times to catch your attention, and then it just automatically turns the stove back on. So you literally don't have to push any buttons whatsoever. So it's very handy that way. And the reason I'm asking is uh, we have an aunt who lives in a care facility and oh, she yeah. has a full kitchen. Oh, yes. And yeah. she is starting she to slow happy. down a little bit. Yeah. And she's been, we've caught her a few times with the stove. Yeah. No, the electric one is very popular. It's actually our biggest seller. But actually not by much. Uh, we sell a ton of gas in the New York State. They, um, uh, they're sitting on a big gas reserve, the whole, most of the state, and so it just makes good sense for them to make use of that. And, uh, but different areas of the country, you know, rely on electric and some on gas and whatnot, but it's, uh, the electric one's really nice. So if you get the electric one and you have it installed, you have an electrician installed? Actually, no, the, the electric one's just a plug-in. You just unplug the stove from the wall and you plug our power box into that outlet, then you plug the stove back in. And then there's just two screws to hold this up underneath the uh, kitchen yeah. cabinet to one side and a cable that just connects the two devices together. And mm -hmm. that's it. It's really simple to do. I'll talk to you at the end. Oh, so, sure. So did you, did I understand you then, is that the normal mode would be that leave it on the five minutes, which means you got to keep coming back if you're doing a 15 or 20 minute job. Well, yeah, it's designed to kind of keep you attentive to the stove and it rewards yeah. you by just yeah. leaving it running. Um, and I said there is a manual timer yeah. if you do want to... You know, yeah, I, I, like I use the manual right off of the start and I'm just yeah. trying to get a feel for, yeah. you know, for normal, like I'm not talking about a long range roast, but frequently, yeah. You know, you have two or three different things going on in yeah. the kitchen at any one time. Well, like I said, if you walk away for four and a half minutes and come back with 30 seconds left on the timer that sees you, it just bumps it back up to five minutes and continues on. So what even if you happen to just walk past. What's the range of that sensor? It's not terribly big. Uh, again, it's designed to keep you closer to the stove, but yeah. it will see you back here when you walk past. As a matter of fact, I. Um, when you walk into the kitchen, you might notice that the light comes on. That's just a motion sensor night light. 
in a sense. And for the gas unit, because there's instructions on the screen, if it sees you're in the area, it's assuming that you might want to use the stove. So the screen buttons up so you can read the instruction. That's all it's doing. But at night, when you walk into the kitchen, it provides a little bit of light. But with all these big, beautiful windows in here, you probably won't need the additional light and such. But um, it's also another way that you can tell that it has seen you because it goes out in 30 seconds. And so if the stove's on doing your soup, and you come around the corner and you happen to walk past and you glance over and you see the light come on, you'll know that it saw you. And then just reset the timer. So it's a nice little feature. I have the feeling, and I don't know why, that mine is, my default is not five minutes, but it's 30 minutes. Is that possible? I'm well, that's the manual, minutes. the manual timer. If you saw 30 minutes on there, it would be the manual timer. Okay. The automatic shutoff, we've got it set at five, but it's, um, there is a way that it can be set anywhere from 1 to 15 minutes, yeah. but a lot well, can happen was, in 15 minutes. I was minutes. playing around with it, and I had it at an hour 30, and then I kind of hit stop and oh, walked away. that was the manual timer. Yeah. If, you, if there's a stop button appears, then it was the manual yeah, timer. Yeah, and then, but later on, I went to turn it on, and I noticed the 30, so I wasn't yeah. sure why it was there. The five-minute countdown timer, we don't have that timer visible. If it's on, it just, it'll just come on and say, um, for the first five seconds, it just says, uh, protection enabled. Right. And then it'll switch to a new instruction saying, when you're done, just press the stop button. Yeah. So, so the um, protection enabled is, it just kind of tells you that it's on and then you, oh, okay, and you go about doing your business. So five seconds later, it'll switch. We used to have the five minute timer visible on the, on the screen, but we found that it was distracting and we don't want our device to distract anybody from their cooking. So they'd see the five minute countdown timer and they'd see it start to count down and they'd move, they'd see it go up and then they'd stop and they'd want to stand there for five minutes waiting to see what's gonna happen. <laughs> and then they don't know what's gonna happen. Then there's concern, that some, you know. Anyways, it just became so distracting that we, we have it hidden in the background. You can make it appear if that's something that would be handy for you, but we just thought the words protection enable would just be easy and just let you know that it's on and to go about your, your business. So, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so something that I have is that, um, and this happened on Easter Monday, yeah. with people wanting to cook longer than two hours. Okay. So I will need uh, like some step-by-step -step to adjust that for when people wanna cook. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Whatever in that. Then, then a lot of the devices, the default, I think have been recently change either two hours or four hours, one of the two, but I mean, it's just a real simple thing to change. Okay, yeah, yeah. so we'll do that because we have some cookers here. Perfect, so, you yeah. know, I, uh, However, um, you have to baste it anyway every two hours. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Baste. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, I had a call, oh, four or five calls from some Italian people, and funny, just because their moms just love to cook, and he said, we just cannot, turn the stove off on her. We need this device. And he says, if, just, if we just disconnected the stove and took it out, it'd be like cutting her leg off. He said, like, she just lives around that stove. And I, jokingly, I said, absolutely, I completely agree. I said, plus you don't want to lose your supply of fresh baked cookies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure you've just got a device that allows them to use the stove and, but you know it's, it's keeping everybody safe. And so, it's a fabulous product. We're really happy. And proud to, to have manufactured it, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, been. There's uh, also, if your family needs to um, um, be brought in for any particular other additional features, um, we've just given you just the very basic, this is how to cook it, but what this device also can do for situations where, where it's required uh, in a home care, um, it can connect to the internet and your family can open up a little online account and it can uh, send them alerts if it hasn't seen anybody in the kitchen for three hours in the morning. Uh, typically when I get up first thing I go and I get a coffee started you know and my device will see me in the kitchen but if it's almost like 10 o'clock in the morning and nobody's showing up it'll just send them a text alert so they can contact the residents and just make sure that everybody's mobile. Um, it's um, got just a whole host of different features that um, uh, 
that Janae can explain to you later, and there's some manuals and such that you can look at if you're curious about it. But it does a whole home care package for occupational therapists and such that are looking after people. And we call it the My Home Care Environment. And basically what it does is it, it uh, turns any suite or a home into an information gathering tool that families and care workers can use to uh, determine the needs of people that are inside that, uh, that apartment or home. Uh, we had uh, one of our long-term customers was testing some of our software for us, and it include, that package included the, the nighttime monitoring. And they said, you know, we really suspected that mom um, wasn't sleeping well because she was so tired every day. And we suspected that, but we couldn't prove it, and we couldn't fix what you couldn't prove. And so they said, with our software, it exposed and, and proved to them in one night that their mother had walked through the kitchen eight times throughout the whole night. So now they knew for sure she just was not sleeping. So then they, with the care worker and her neurologist, they were able to start adjusting her medication until such time that they started to see less and less movement through the kitchen at night until they said, wow, she walked through one time. So then they knew that she was sleeping much better and they could see that in, in her during the day. And so the uh, Alberta government is, uh, going to be putting these throughout their uh, seniors' homes in Alberta uh, for that reason, that they can provide information if the families choose to get that. Um, and it just does some wonderful stuff. And it's always uh, looking down the road and planning for the future. And, uh, they may just start out with these devices just protecting uh, the homes from fire and such. Uh, and as people do require these other features and such, it, the device already does that. They just have to just check mark on on the software and the way that feature goes. and uh, So it's a fabulous product that is giving people insight into what's going on in their homes. And it's especially good for families that are scattered all over the country. And uh, we've, uh, there's a temperature alert in the device that will read the ambient temperature in the, in the home. And in Alberta, for instance, if somebody's gone on holidays for the winter and the furnace quits and it's getting really cold, the pipes are gonna freeze, before that happens, it'll send out a text alert to their next door neighbor, or family member, or even their heating and cooling company so they can come and check on it. And so one of our devices keeps sending over these alerts at like three o'clock in the morning, our time, from Japan. And the temperature in this particular home is, I'm not sure what they're cooking in there. And the, those woks must get awfully hot or whatever it is that they're using, but the alert goes off and so we've kind of mentioned it to them a few times. And it's, oh, no, no, everything's good, everything's good. But uh, I mean, it just provides some wonderful information. Uh, what was it, about eight, 10 years ago in Chicago, all in the Midwest, all those heat waves, and all those people were dying because of the extraordinary, the, the high temperatures. Um, in a lot of situations, it was because the air conditioners had quit. And they didn't realize that it was getting dangerously hot and they were at risk of uh, dehydration and whatnot. Anyways, that device will also record the high temperature and send out an alert for somebody, a building manager or loved one or somebody to come in and check on them and just make sure that everything's good. And uh, so there's a lot of applications that people are really uh, picking up on this for. And uh, just to kind of wrap this up, the one funny story was this lady bought one for her dog. And so of course we had to ask, okay, I didn't know your dog liked to cook. And she said, well, what he would do was when she'd go to work, he'd get on his <coughs> feet and he'd put his paws on the counter and he'd move himself along looking for any treats and such as he might have knocked out there. And he would go across the front of the gas stove and gas stoves, the knobs are always on the front. And he, his paws would accidentally turn the gas knobs. And she'd come home at the end of the day and the house is full of unburned gas. And she said, I just can't have that. And she said, this is perfect for my dog's <laughs> tendency to want to look for treats. And so, uh, so yeah, so now he can turn those knobs all he wants, and unless that start button had been pressed, nothing's gonna happen. And that's part of the, uh, in the electric, it's a, a child lock version where toddlers, you know, grandkids have to turn knobs and switches and stuff and run away giggling, and they can play with the front of that stove and nothing will happen. And one of the features that, um, that exact feature would have prevented a terrible fire that happened uh, not last summer but the summer before in the Okanagan area again not getting too specific but it was a, a, um, a 
a red resort and it was uh, short term rentals and there's a lot of wineries in the valley as you know and so these groups of people had shown up and they brought their groceries and such because they're fully furnished and they sent all their bags of groceries and luggage and such and they were so excited to go out on, on a wine tour somebody had bumped the stove knob and it turned the stove on and they'd left and they came back a few hours later and the whole building had been evacuated everybody's out on the street and it turns out their suite there was forty five thousand dollars worth of damage fire damage and it destroyed their suite their luggage their belongings everything and so that was the start of their holiday and so again just that simple bumping of that knob can cause a lot of problems and again our, our device just prevents a lot of that uh, Janae, can you is there a question from our monday experience that you could ask why we had that problem and what happened oh okay um so they had just had the um stove guard installed and then needed to cook their easter dinner oh yeah and uh it took their oven um it stopped like, at 100 degrees yeah so couldn't get it going anyway. yeah huh. it's odd yeah it was odd and then um because I, I don't have the the valves actually in the box in the room but it's just a gas valve it doesn't uh, control the amount of gas it's just on or off and so um, we have had a couple other people um, a couple of dealers have supplied some devices and they said that their stove seemed to be operating differently afterwards and we just said like there's just no way it just does not control or govern the amount of gas that's going into a stove it's just open or closed and so they did check and they found that through the installation there have been some something got into the gas line or something that was causing the restriction mm -hmm. in one situation um, and I never did find out what the other situation and such was but does your stove operate okay now or was it just that first time well we had the technician back yeah it happened to still be in the building <laughs> yeah and uh, I don't think he knew what he did either but it started working oh well I think oh, that's we good. I think we wondered whether it was it was the Celsius that seemed to be the problem. The setting for fair. Oh, I saw the stove itself, possibly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that could very well be. Yeah. So then we had the technician change it to Fahrenheit. And oh, then, I see. Oh, okay. And then it moved. And then we got the temperature. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that. Uh, that reminds me of a six hour Christmas dinner we had one time. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, talking about the gas valve. Um, uh, there's a sensor on. The gas valve underneath the stove to smell look for unburned gas and there's also one on the uh, control panel as well and so if for whatever reason there's a leak or something like that on the equipment um, this will sense it and after a period of time it starts to get to a dangerous level and it will shut the gas valve off which is just supposed to do and the device will go into an alert and it'll just say that there's been gas detected on there so you can just have it today or somebody come and check it uh, just to make sure but um, typically if you left the gas burner on and the flame wasn't lit the five minute countdown should turn the gas stove off first if it's bumped and you didn't know that it was open and you were still wandering around the kitchen and it saw you which would allow it to continue to just run and run it would sniff it after probably about 10 minutes or so and then set off the alarm and just let me know that you can check the knobs and make sure that they're off. If you'll excuse me a second, I'm just going to oh, go sure. get my better hat. It'll be ready.